In the previous lecture, we learned one way of collecting information from users by using the prompt method. And we display that information in the console. While those techniques are great for learning, there are other effective options that works better when building projects. So now I'll teach you a more conventional way of displaying information on a web page using a special JavaScript method and property. And plus, you are going to code along with me and practice using JavaScript to use many of the skills you've learned so far to create your first web app. It's called Character Counter. Let's see how it works. When the page loads, a dialog box appears with a message. Enter your text here. A user can type in words, phrases, or even sentences. For example, I type, I love JavaScript. If I click OK, the program will capture what I typed, find out how many characters in it, structure a short message using H1 tags, and finally, insert the message into our HTML page. I click OK. The final message looks like this. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it, and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Strings. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. Here I also open the JavaScript console. In the index.html file, remember to link the counter.js file. In counter.js file, I start by creating a variable named text to count to store the value returned by a prompt dialog that says, enter your text here. Then create another variable named text size to store the length of the text user typed. In this case, it's the length of the text stored in a variable text to count. I'll just use string's length property to find its length like this. Remember, the length property contains the information about how many characters the string has, including white spaces. Next, I'll create the final message by creating a variable named info message and assigning it a template literal. Remember, we define template literal with backticks. Inside the backticks, I type you typed colon followed by a space. Then use a dollar sign and curly braces to dynamically insert or interpolate the value of the variable text to count. Followed by a comma and space. After that, I type the phrase it has followed by a space and then dollar sign and curly braces to dynamically insert or interpolate the value of the variable text size followed by a space and type characters including white spaces and followed by a period i'll test this code by logging the value of info message to the console I'll save the change, refresh the page, the prompt dialog appears, I'll type I love JavaScript, click OK, and in the console I see the message. Good, now let's get this content into the page. I'll teach you a JavaScript method and property that will let you insert content, even HTML markups into a page. Inserting content into the page with JavaScript is a two-step process. First, we access or select the HTML element where we want the content to appear. Then we let JavaScript know what content to insert into that element. A common way to access HTML element is with a method called query selector like this. Inside the parenthesis, we can provide the tag name, class, or ID of the element we want to access as a string. So let's, for example, access this header element in our HTML document. To access the header element, we need to add one more piece of information before the query selector part, and that is document dot. Now, don't worry too much about what document dot means. In fact, we have seen it before when we use document dot write method. All you need to know right now is 
that query selector is a method of browser's built-in object called document. And it's going to help us interact with the browser to find the HTML elements we want to access. I'll teach you more about this in a later courses. Okay, so now we are saying, hey JavaScript, go in the HTML and get us the header element so that we can do something with it. And it's going to return the first header element that it finds. In this case, there's only one. I can make sure this works by running this line of code in the console. I'll copy this line of code. Back to the browser. Open the console. Paste my code. And press enter. The console returns the HTML header tags. Perfect. We have successfully accessed the header element. Now we need to let it know what content to display. After the parentheses, add a dot, then type inner HTML. Followed by a space and an equal sign. Inner HTML is a property that replaces the existing contents of an element with a new content. So what exactly we want the header elements in our HTML content to be? Well, in this case, it should be the value of info message. And we learned that a string can also contain HTML tags. So let's mark up the info message with h1 tags like this. I'll save the chains, refresh the page, the prompt dialog appears, this time I'll type JavaScript is easy to learn. Click OK. And as you can see, the info message is successfully inserted into the page. If I inspect the element, Notice the newly created H1 element that's inside the header element. Interacting with web pages like this is the core of JavaScript programming. Great, you have just learned some pretty powerful new tools and techniques in JavaScript.